Hello and welcome to the Learning to Slay the Beast podcast, a resilience podcast where we talk about all the challenging things that we're working to overcome like anxiety, health and relationship issues. My name is Sarah. Welcome to the Learning to Slay the Beast podcast. I'm Sarah and I'm happy to connect with you again this week. We are well into our spring session. Uh, We've had a string of podcasts coming out this spring that have been focusing on a number of different topics from energy work to parenting with pride to fitness. And today we're more on the fitness side of things. And this is something that I'm really interested in. It's how to train over the age of 40. So we're all getting older. It's inevitable. I've been training pretty intensively for the last 10 years, and I'm really noticing my 30-year-old body and my 40-year-old body are not the same. And fine, you know, there are things that have contributed to that. Um, Weight gain during COVID, uh, definitely, you know, some challenges in my personal life that I've, you know, turned to food and, and put on some extra weight. Also moving away from really disordered eating and I've tried to um, look at eating in a different way than I ever have in my life. And as a result, I'm heavier than I was 10 years ago when I started training. But I am still training. And so I wanted to speak with today's guests and really understand, you know, what is the difference in the body, how should we do things differently? And I think the biggest thing that's changing in my mind is I'm no longer, I want to be fit because I want to look a certain way. It's like focusing on that mobility piece. It's focusing on the fact that I want to be strong and fit and able to still do things with my kids, you know, eventually, God willing, grandchildren, all of those things, right? And so That's really what this conversation is today. How to avoid injury and illness. What do we do as we're starting to get older? How can we look at things a little bit differently? So today's guest is Yana Barrett. She's a fitness and movement coach, and she has a passion for training women in fitness, especially over 40. She wants to change some of those prevailing and damaging myths around how to train female bodies specifically. And so today we're going to learn the differences between male and female training and then focus on that training over 40 and how to prevent injury and be able to be our best selves. So please welcome. Welcome, Yana Barrett. So welcome, Yana, to the podcast. I'm happy to connect with you today. Oh, it's so lovely to be here with you, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's great. And I understand you're joining us from New Zealand, where it's much, much warmer than what we've got going on here in Canada. So <laughs> yeah, no, it's summer, summer here. It's lovely. Yeah, that's, that's inspiring. It's like nice to think summer, summer will come for us too eventually. Um, why don't we start with you giving us a little bit about your background? I know we're going to talk about fitness and movement today, but let's let's hear about how you got interested in this. So I was a full-time mother of three children, and by the time my third baby came around, I was just so achy and so broken. Mm-hmm. Um, I constantly had sore back, I would tweak it quite often. And I just, mm. you know, going through three pregnancies in six years was was a lot on my body. And I kind of thought I need to do something. And I was just doing yoga and a little bit of running. And then I hired my first fitness coach. And then within three months, I just felt not only stronger physically, but also I loved the the mental strength and the resilience and the grit that comes with kind of physical exercise. So I was totally hooked. And then um, I left my teaching career behind after I went back to work and retrained as a personal trainer. And then since then, I've been collecting all sorts of different certifications and experimenting with different fitness modalities. And for almost the last 10 years, I have been coaching predominantly women, but, but some men too. But I I help mainly people over the age of 40 because, you know, I'm 46 as well. So that's a demographic that, that, you know, I'm going through my 40s now. So I help 
women mm-hmm. and few men to to kind of gain physical strength and lifelong fitness so they can live their lives to the fullest. That sounds great. And yeah, I mean, I got really into fitness after my second child, like after my daughter was born. And like you said, like you did, like started working with a trainer. I was like early 30s at that point. And now that I'm into my 40s, I, it does feel very different. So can you tell us like, how how do we adapt as we kind of get into that over 40? Like I notice, you know, injury coming more now, things like that. Mm. Yeah, that's that's a really valid question. So I, I think what women and, and men, you know, need to think about when they hit their 40s is longevity predominantly. So mm. I feel like it shouldn't really no longer matter how much you lifting or that kind of ego exercise, but you should really be thinking very deeply how you want to live the next few decades of your life, pretty much how you know, you need to focus on things like mobility, which is probably not very sexy or, you know, it's not the latest trend. But, you know, once you hit your 60s and 70s, if you can no longer get out of a chair or get in and out of a car comfortably mm-hmm. or get um, off the floor easily, th- those are going to be things that are going to seriously affect the quality of your life and your your possible loss of independence as you're getting older, because I see it um, on my clients, because most of my clients are kind of in their 40s and early 50s, and they see it on their parents now. Mm -hmm. As they are losing strength, they are losing mobility, and they are essentially having to move into assisted living, and that's really sad, and it's completely preventable. So things like mobility and a very targeted functional strength training. So those are the things that people you know, need to kind of switch their thinking into um, doing those things and thinking about longevity rather than losing weight or building big biceps and, you know, running certain distances. I think is they're kind of preserving the functionality of our bodies becomes the number one focus. Yeah, I like that. And that is definitely a mindset shift for sure, right? Because as you're in that younger, it is more like you've got that competitive side happening. You're like, you know, gaining strength, you're gaining, yeah, if you're running. Do you are there certain exercises that you or like sports that you're like over 40, I would like advise against? Like, do you do you still think running is something to be doing over 40? Do you think, you know, um, I'm trying to think of something else like another con- competitive sport or are there th- certain things that you're less less prescribing to clients? <sighs> that's, that's, a tr- <laughs> that's a tricky question because I strongly believe that everybody should be living their lives to the fullest. And if running really is something that people passionately love, then, you know, I'm not going to tell people to, to stop doing that. Um, mm-hmm. I think after 40, what you need to think about is the intensity and the volume of training. So rather mm-hmm. than thinking about specific sport, like I have, I get a lot of clients, a lot of women specifically from these high intensity fitness classes like CrossFit yeah. and F45. Those are the ones that I probably believe in the least but it can still be done with the right kind of adjustment to the intensity. So it's not an individual sport, but it's about the intensity and the frequency with which you're doing the sport. You know, and I've coached runners and I've coached professional powerlifters and a lot of athletes. So I understand that, you know, they love their sport and they want to still keep doing it and they really should But it's about, okay, maybe you just can't pile lift what you used to 10 years Mm -hmm. ago. Or maybe you just need to drop that fourth training a week and replace it with mobility, more mobility training, more recovery. So I think that that that, that will be my philosophy. I will never tell someone, you know, to stop doing something they absolutely love and that brings them lots of joy because life is short. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's about what are you doing you know, in terms of mobility and recovery and and um, how much training you are doing because you're not 20 anymore. At 40, you're not 20 anymore or 30. It's the body is different. The, it doesn't, 
cope with the physical stress as as well as it used to. So it will be about adjusting the training and the intensity, but but not actually fully give, giving up. Mm, okay, that makes sense. And so say, you know, you were somebody that in your 30s, you're running four times a week, like you, you could maybe do three or two and then replace the others with like yoga or strength or um, movement. Like, is that sort of how to look at it maybe? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, or maybe you've reduced the length of the runs or somehow tweak, you know, everybody is different. Every single mm-hmm. human body is, is really different and goes through aging um, in a very really different way. Um, men often can get away with a little bit more than, than women can, especially as we entering perimenopause and menopause. That's a really tricky time for women to, to keep up with like high volume, high stress training, but yeah, that, that's a really good strategy too. Or, um yeah, start introducing more strength training and more mobility training. I really cannot stress enough the importance of mobility training as you're aging, especially as an athlete or a very active person, to, to prevent those those aches and injuries that, that you mentioned too, that a lot of people blame on aging, but it's really doesn't have that much to do with aging. It's more about not looking after your joints and your connective tissue in a really systematic way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And just in case somebody's like less familiar, mobility training, like what do you mean by that? Like what are some of the the key pieces of it? So usually I describe kind of the difference between stretching and um, mobility training. So when you're stretching, imagine kind of that classic yoga class or after a training session. So you are just kind of stretching the muscle in a very inactive, passive way. Mm-hmm. Mobility training is actually strength training for the joint. So it is a dynamic movement and it has a component of strength. So it's a very active, dynamic type of stretching. And that's something that people should be doing before they start their exercise, especially if they're in their 40s and later on. And that's something that they should dedicate time to, as a, not as an afterthought or a warm-up or a post-workout kind of cool down, but but a really targeted, systematic, very important piece of your exercise routine. Mm, okay. Okay. No, that sounds really good. And and that can make that difference as we get into our 60s, 70s kind of thing. Oh, hugely. And it's we also have to think about our modern lifestyle where we are spending huge amounts of time sitting down, which mm-hmm. our hips don't like um we are kind of hunched over our phones and computers and it's it's inevitable you know most of us have to do some computer work some people more than others mm-hmm. but but we need to compensate for these positions we are putting our bodies in because we haven't evolved to do that you know we we still live in a primal body in a very mismatched modern world and that's why our bodies are suffering so much. And most people, you, I've actually was listening to a podcast and the number one medical complaint in the world is back pain. Mm. You know, who hasn't experienced back pain at some point of their lives? It's pretty much probably about 100% of people, right? Yeah. So I think it's that compensating for, for the modern lifestyle of sitting down too much, sitting in couches, you know, driving a lot, where our body starts getting very tight. Most people have a bit of tightness between the shoulder blades. People have tight, stiff necks, um, tight hips, which often cause lower back pain. So it's mobility is wonderful um, for kind of lubricating the body and and improving your posture, for restoring the full range of motion in your joints, because that's what a lot of people are lacking. They just become very stiff, their bodies hold a lot of tension and they just don't move well and don't feel well too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. And are there any kind of like, what do you recommend in terms of if somebody's like, okay, I'm, I need to do this mobility thing. Do I look up some exercise online? Do I, is it something really best to go to a class or a trainer? Uh, What, what would you say would be a good way to start? 
so you don't need to hire a trainer for mobility training. It, it, they're actually reasonably simple movements you can follow. I, I have a free six day mobility challenge if anybody's interested. Um, yeah, it's just, just have a look around, follow some mobility people, follow me on social media. I post um, workouts all the time, mobility, you know, little um, sessions. The beautiful thing about mobility is that you really only have to do 10 minutes a day. Oh, wow. You have to do it consistently. So mobility, the key is consistency, not okay. the amount of time. And I mean, I have had people download my free challenge and they send me a message three days later and they said, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. For the first time in years, I have woke up, woken up without that stiff knot in my lower back. And all I was doing was just a little bit of hip exercises. It's really quite um, potent form of training and it is so simple it is so time <laughs> effective it's mm -hmm. it's yeah that there will be my number one recommendation for everyone over 40 is that start thinking about doing 10 minutes of mobility exercises first thing in the morning or last last thing at night when you've come home from the office say just to kind of make the body feel good and and um, restore the, the good posture and and just breathe some life into your body after you've been sitting down for eight nine ten hours yeah and i can see it's a really tricky time 40 because now a days it feels very much like you know people say 40 is the new 30 and and yet also, our bodies are still aging, right? Like, it's kind of that hard thing where I'll still see, like, well, so-and-so is doing a marathon or, like, so-and-so is into CrossFit and they're, like, putting on muscle and they're getting – and so you have that sort of competitive feeling. But then I guess, yeah, we just almost have to, like, focus on ourselves and, and really say, like, no, mobility is, is something now. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Mobility and strength training, definitely. I, th I think the message is has been really strong about women and strength training because mm -hmm. you know, I often, <clears throat> excuse me, I often see, you know, clients come to me sometimes. I had a woman in her 60s and she had, you know, osteoporosis, which is the um, thinning of the bones, which is very um, real for a lot of women because we lose bone density as we're aging at a quite rapid um right and um she was so weak she couldn't lift her granddaughter out of a cot and you know, these are sometimes those moments when you realize that strength training could have saved a lot of heartache or when um you know one in three women over 50 will fall and have a fracture and mm -hmm. that is usually you know, lack of strength or um, definitely lack of strength in the bone. So so I think that what women over 40 need to start thinking about, it's the health of their bones and also the lean muscle mass because muscle has now been proven to be the organ of longevity. And if you don't have adequate, strong, lean muscle mass, your aging is not going to be fun. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's about thinking you know, I think women just are not thinking anymore about, you know, exercising to lose weight or exercise to work off that donut that you had yesterday with your children. I think it's more about, you know, I, I want strong bones and I want a strong body so I can play with my grandchildren. I can still potter in my garden. I can live in my own home. I can walk down and up and you know up the stairs and and things like that rather than hey i've done five crossword classes this week mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Is that switch in mindset and switch in thinking you know like don't train for the crossword body train for your old lady body you know <laughs> <laughs> so you, you can live a very long and healthy life um doing you know not being limited because i what, what makes me really sad is that you know, when I talk to people and they said, oh, I can't, I can't um, surf anymore because I just, you know, have injured shoulders and I, I can't, just can't do it. That, it's just so sad because mm -hmm. there's no need. There is no need. If you, if you just look after your body and, you know, it's the only thing you've got really is the, that's the vessel in which you experience life. And um, that's, but without it, you just like a ball of energy floating in space, right? 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And in terms of weight training, like what do you see as kind of that sweet spot? Like, is it um, moderate weight? Um, is it heavier weights and less reps? Is it um, lower weights and and more reps? Like, how how do you typically, as you get over forty, do you find that changes? That really depends on people because, you know, some people are more gifted in, you know, the kind of um, slow twitch fibers, which means that you are a little bit more designed for strength work. Some people mm. are more, you know, very good runners, for example. And so so that really varies. I don't think people really need to focus on the numbers. I, I, th- I think the, mo- the most important thing when you are weightlifting after 40 is to make sure you're doing it with a very good form. Hmm. so you know whether that's can you lift you know can you deadlift 50 kilos with good form can you lift deadlift 60 70 80 but it needs to be with good form and and also I think what women haven't been taught and that's only just starting to come into the conversations in the fitness industry is we have been kind of being molded women being molded into men's world so Mm -hmm. we are training like men essentially most of us you know training cycle or training kind of schedule that runs from monday to saturday or a Mm six-week cycle or a 12-week cycle it's designed for men because men run on a 24-hour hormonal window so they can work out and they recover reasonably quickly and they can do it again. Even the Monday to Friday work day has been designed for men. And, you know, I've got nothing against men at all, but it's just the world we living in. Whereas a woman's training schedule should always be 28, 30 days because the, that's our hormonal cycle. And within that 28, 30 days, obviously that varies from woman to woman. We need to look at that and then, you need to learn, you should learn and you should know when can you train hard and when you take it a little bit easy. And that's something that no one's teaching young girls or women, you know, because in, in, in your 40s, the chances are that you are still having a quite regular cycle. And even in menopause, women still should train in this kind of cyclical 28 to 30 day training schedule. And I don't know any coaches who (laughs) are designing a 28-day training schedule for women. But, you know, if you push too hard in the second part of your cycle, you're going to seriously upset the the production of progesterone. And then, you know, women have very heavy periods and bad PMS and um, much worse perimenopausal symptoms. And it's as simple as, hey, train hard in the first two weeks of your cycle. You can train like a man. But in the second uh, second part of your cycle where you really need to be making progesterone, just take it a little bit easier, tone down the training, maybe go for an extra walk rather than a strength training session and then allow the body just to, you know, produce what it needs to produce and then go hard again when, when, you know, um, when you've kind of gone through the uncomfortable part of your, of your um, period. And, you know, women don't know that a lot of, Coaches don't know that, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I used to do the same. I used to push so hard all the time. It was always about lifting more and and doing more complicated exercises. And now the freedom I have and my clients have because we understand so intimately our cycles and what hormones are dominant and what each hormone needs it's just so easy now, you know, and, and I think that what I really like about knowing your cycle is that it removes the guilt when sometimes you wake up in the morning and you really don't have the energy and you feel tired, but you do have that workout scheduled and you know that you don't want to feel like you're slacking or you, mm-hmm. you're just lazy but if you have a look at your cycle and you realize that it's your week three, you kind of like, well, I totally understand why I don't have much energy and I don't feel like pushing hard at the gym. So maybe you're just going to go for a nice walk or a yoga class or a swim or just do 15 minutes of mobility. So I think it gives women a really nice freedom and really kind of 
understanding how their bodies work and so they're working with it rather than against it. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And you're right, not something that we're hearing a lot about in terms of the impact of of that cycle on on how and what we can do during that time. And so it sounds like it's not so much like, um, you know, cut things out or anything. It's just kind of like bring bring down the intensity during that second half. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, in the ideal world, even your work would be you know, in that very crucial kind of fragile week three, you should kind of rest more and Mm -hmm. reduce the workload, which is, you know, (laughs) it's easy to (laughs) say because we are living in a Monday to Friday world and we have children, commitments and everything else. But it's just think about it, you know, try to kind of maybe sleep more and fit in a little bit more rest and because the, the body will thank you for it in the, you know, when the period comes and you're not, suffering and struggling and you just feel good Mm -hmm. yeah and probably you know if you start to see and you track it for a while you then see oh yeah no the intensity comes back I'm not just slacking right like almost proving to yourself Mm -hmm. that that this this is something and it, it can work for you does it help to avoid injury as well yes it does because I think that when we kind of working against the body so in that you know, in that week three, when you really need to make progesterone and progesterone is very sensitive to cortisol, which is our stress hormone and physical exercise is stress. It's, Mm -hmm. you know, it's a good stress and we want it because that would make us, you know, stronger and give us results. But, but for your nervous system, it's still a stress. Your nervous system doesn't recognize good and bad stress. It's just a stress just contributes to the all of the stresses that you go through every single day. Yeah, it's about the intensity. It's about the resting, and it's it's about um, just taking it a little bit, a little bit easier. Yeah, I kind of yeah. forgot your question, Sarah. No, sorry. no, I just was asking if if that can help to avoid the injury piece. Oh, the injuries. Well. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, because when you are tired, um, uh, you know, and and I, th- I think if you really tune in, most women will realize that in that week we are just a little bit. L- you know, less energetic and a little bit more tired. And that will cause you maybe not to pay as much attention when you're lifting or mm-hmm. your body's just not performing at 100%. So, yeah, I, I, I would absolutely say that it will prevent injuries because, you know, you know that if you are tired and you go and you work out, you just feel a little bit not as focused, a little bit clumsier perhaps. You know, you can kind of – your mm-hmm. balance is – affected as well you know you probably remember if you've gone to the gym after a night of very bad sleep you just Mm -hmm. don't feel that connected you know balance is off and everything seems harder I think that is the kind of the feeling of the exercise is just everything is just a bit hard and you're kind of pushing it feels like you're pushing uphill really hard and you know some days you go to the gym and you just absolutely nail it and and breeze through it and feel amazing so yeah definitely as an injury prevention there will be the week that I would be definitely toning down the intensity and maybe not lifting so heavy and or I'm um, choosing a different type of movement or exercise that makes sense and and I do see that where I kind of feel like I get into that cycle of like I'm doing so well I'm finally starting to make progress. I'm getting stronger, stronger. And then I'll end up injured or sick. And then I feel like, oh no, it's like you lose it. And then you're like back on that upward climb. Like, is that something that's common over 40? Because when I was in my thirties, I just kind of felt like I just kept getting better. Like I was like, oh yeah, like I'm adding, I'm adding. And now it sort of feels like this roller coaster in my forties. (laughs) <laughs> you you might be what I call the boom and bust yeah, of okay. exercise. You kind of go hard and you get amazing results and then you either get sick or injured and then you mm-hmm. need to take it out and then you basically feels like you're starting all over again. Yeah. Yeah. So that might just – your training might just need to get a little bit tweaked. Yeah, I think perhaps you're pushing a bit hard and yeah. um, maybe not doing enough kind of mobility and recovery work because – We can train just as hard in our 40s, but we just need to think about recovery. So maybe we just need a little bit more recovery. Maybe you Mm -hmm. just need to stress 
as your workouts a little bit more do lots of mobility again mobility it's mobility is like literally the most potent thing you can do to avoid injuries because your injuries happen there's only a few reasons why you're getting injured it's either you're exercising with suboptimal form so there is some kind of you know technique that needs to be adjusted or poor biomechanics maybe um, poor engagement of certain muscles or stability or it's lack of mobility or lack of strength so lifting a little bit too heavy for what your body is capable or a lack of mobility means that that your joint doesn't have a full range of motion there's some stiffness or Mm. tension joint and so therefore your biomechanics become affected so when you think about an overhead press if you don't have 100% great mobility in the shoulder, the movement is going to be really affected by that. So then you are loading maybe the small muscles in the rotator cuff or because at the end of overhead press, it should be quite easy because you're actually loading the skeletal system because you are directly overhead. But most people don't have a full range of motion in their shoulders. So they're a little bit off that kind of full extension. And so that means that instead of loading the bone, which is very strong and doesn't require a lot of energy, you are loading some of the small stabilizing muscles in the shoulder and that will eventually lead to injury. Or if you're doing deadlifts and you don't understand how to fully engage your core and your glutes, you're probably deadlifting with your hip flexors, which then lead to injury in the hips or sore hip. So it's kind of these things, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that does make a lot of sense. It's like that little tweak in how you're doing it that can really lead to the injury. Okay, Um, that's really helpful. And I mean, I think we kind of talked about it a little bit, but any other specific differences between like, training for women over 40 versus men beyond like the cycle is a is there anything else I don't really think so no because you know men go through their own thing when they're aging as well it's not mm-hmm. like men is through it and we struggle through it it's not true um it's the same for them um they often you know get get even more injuries because there's a little bit more component of ego, I think, with men and exercise and lifting. Mm -hmm. No, um, you know, we're not small men. I I think that, you know, I used to go to the gym and I used to compete with the gym bros and my colleagues and that was just really stupid. (laughs) Now I look back at it. Um, It's, you know, you will never out train a man. (laughs) You know, it's not possible. They have more muscle mass. They have bigger bones, stronger bones. It's, you know, there is definitely biological, massive biological differences between men and women. And so, no, apart from the different training schedule, I think we can train pretty much in the same way as as men do, just that they are on their Monday to Friday or six-week or 12-week cycles. We should be firmly sticking to the 28, 30 day cycle okay training yeah okay great and any like tips that you have in terms of staying motivated I mean I know we should be able Mm -hmm. to talk ourselves through the like okay we want to be strong as we get older that kind of thing but anything else that you find day-to-day really keeps you engaged I think what I tell my clients, the ones that struggle, and motivation is a myth, let's be let's be honest, motivation is a feeling, it's an emotion, mm-hmm. it comes and goes. If if I worked out when I'm motivated, I'll probably work out five times a month. It's right. it's not about motivation at all. It's that's that's the kind of feeling. It's more about commitment and dedication and, and forming habits. I tell my clients to really deeply think about the why Mm. why why do you exercise you know is it so you can play with your children and keep up with them and then one day look after your grandchildren is it so you can do your favorite sport for as long as you want like for me I am I love surfing and I'm not going to give that up. I want to surf when I'm like an old wrinkly grandma. So for me, a lot of training, you know, I do, it's to help me surf when I want and for how long I, I wish. Um, is it, you know, um, so you can live in your own home, although that's quite 
kind of abstract thought, but it's mm -hmm. about thinking why, what will being strong and fit and mobile and flexible give you in the future, you know? And often, as I said, for a lot of my clients, they are now seeing their parents really struggle, struggle to live on their own, struggle with injuries and falls and broken hips and broken pelvises and moving into assisted living. So I think for them it's quite real and it's quite, you know, really in their faces. But I think that the the biggest motivator when you're lying in that bed and, you know, it's nice and cosy and for you that must be terrible to, you know, it's hard to motivate yourself. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I feel I, I know you know and you kind of like I just want to push that snooze button but it's that kind of connecting it with hey if I if I don't do this then I might become really weak and um, lose my muscles because you know we lose mm -hmm. as women we lose muscles after 30 at a quite rapid rate which then accelerates in perimenopause and menopause and Often when we lead, lose lean muscle oh, well. mass, it gets replaced by body fat. And that's why often women in midlife, mm -hmm. obviously, you know, there's a lot of weight gain because of hormones. But there is also, you're not looking and cultivating your lean muscle mass. And that once you lose that, that is your metabolic currency. That is the organ of longevity. I mean, there is phenomenal research coming out now that muscles are actually they are now scientists are now starting to look at muscle as an endocrine organ because it's when you're exercising your muscle is producing proteins and hormones and chemical components that are incredibly beneficial for your body and your brain there's plenty of research that exercise is incredible for prevention of alzheimer's and dementia and parkinson's so you know, I, I think what I really love at the moment is the phenomenal amount of research that's coming out with exercise being so beneficial for so much more than just looking good and losing weight. Mm -hmm. It's more about brain health. It's about, you know, keeping us away from metabolic diseases like diabetes and insulin resistance and and kind of exercise is an incredible potent and relatively easy way to prevent most of the modern diseases that people are suffering from right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that's really helpful. And, and totally agree. Like it's often, yeah, same, I don't feel super motivated certain days, but you know, you start, yeah. you just get going. <laughs> and I do find, I don't know if it's necessarily the winter or what is it? like I find some days I'm like you know what it's gonna have to be lunch today like I just cannot get out of bed in the morning but <laughs> some days yeah. some days I can still do it but yeah um I've had yeah. to kind of adjust at times and you know sometimes it's just hard and sometimes mm -hmm. you you might just need an extra rest you know that's mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. that's cool too but I think that if you kind of understand your cycle and understand where you're at you can be just a little bit more compassionate and kind of empathetic to your body and yeah. and think you know, maybe on the first day of period maybe I'm just not going to go to the gym and deadlift 100 kilos <laughs> you know because yeah. my body is working so hard and but maybe I'll just go for a walk so rather than feeling really kind of bad about it and you know at the end of the day you say I haven't really even moved just do something else you know rather than um rather than you know doing that heavy gym workout do, do just do something else you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Easy. Yeah. yeah that sounds great so before we wrap up any other tips or advice that you want to flag for listeners no, I think for women over 40, you know, there's really just the three types of exercise that you need to do. There is mobility work um, to keep your body moving well. There is um, some form of strength training. And that doesn't mean um, that you need to go to the gym and lift weights either. You know, there is there's strength training comes in many, many different forms. You can just do some squats and push-ups at home. And then uh, walking. Walking as a zone to cardio when you're just walking and not even increasing your heart rate that much, which is incredibly beneficial for actually weight loss and um, kind of building that endurance in the muscles. So those are, exercise is actually quite simple when you <laughs> when you boil it down. Just these three things after 40, that's, um, that's all you need to do. Okay. 
No, that sounds great. I think most people could fit that in and it seems doable. Um, so I know you mentioned earlier that you've got mobility challenge. Like what is the best way to connect with you online through social media or is there a website? Absolutely. I have a website and I have tons of freebies. So if people are unsure what mobility is about, um, definitely download some of my freebies. The six day mobility challenge is it's a really good start and very good introduction to mobility training and yeah i'm on instagram and facebook and i have a private facebook community as well called the midlife movement for women and i do free training there um every single week and women can kind of access my support and ask questions and it's a very supportive community where you can ask literally anything anything goes (laughs) because it's um just for women so it's a very kind of safe container Mm -hmm. for women to be very open about, you know, perimenopause and menopause and cycles and and anything they are going through right now. So you can find me there. That sounds great. Okay, I will link up to that in the show notes. And I really appreciate your time today. I think this was great. I know we don't talk enough about the differences in terms of movement as we get older. So it's it's actually kind of comforting to hear that, you know, you can take a different yeah. approach and, and still be doing the right thing. Absolutely. Yeah. People tend to overcomplicate exercise. I think it's just about consistency. You can just literally do 10, 10 15 minutes, you know, most days. And that's that's enough just to keep you keep you strong and keep you moving. That sounds great. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me, Sarah. It's been such a pleasant, fun conversation. Thank you so much to Yana Barrett for joining me on today's podcast. I really found it to be a great conversation. Definitely learned a lot and things that I'm going to be keeping in mind. I especially loved her bringing in, um, you know, some of those hormone pieces and, you know, talking about how um, it's not just training, but then we've got to think about even our cycle as women and then training over 40, all of those things coming in together. Um, it really makes you realize it isn't easy. Like there are a lot of parts that go into being fit and preventing injury. So definitely check out Yana Barrett and her website, www.themovementcoach.nz. I'm sure you can hook up to everything on there and check out some of those freebies that she talked about as well. And thank you so much to Yana for being a wonderful guest today. I hope that everybody did learn something just like myself and we can end up focusing on our strength, mobility, fitness as we age. Thank you so much for listening and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Learning to Slay the Beast podcast. Please keep in mind, this podcast is not intended to be medical or professional advice. If you'd like to hear more from me, you can follow me on social media, Instagram and TikTok at Sarah Lady Gluten or Facebook, Sarah underscore Gluten Free Lady. You can also visit my website, which includes author information, speaking information, and more info on the podcast at www.se-german.com. If you like the podcast, please feel free to review the podcast on your favorite platform and also subscribe because it means that it will show up for you every week on your favorite podcast platform. Also, we've just started to have the ability to support the podcast. You can find this link in my Instagram bio or visit Kofi, K-O hyphen F-I dot com slash learning to slay the beasts. Thanks again for listening and have a great week.